got thumbs up. Yeah. So this is a this is a little thing I'm trying to put together <laughs> to try to solve all our problems. Okay. Oh, wrong. Right. There we go. That, that one. Yeah. No. I, we call it we. I'm saying we because there's a couple other guys involved. The Media Development Manifesto. Okay. <coughs> so uh, I don't know if you can see that it's background very well. This this is a globe. This is Earth. <coughs> I call this real world. Okay. Not Amiga world. Now we're talking real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not fantasy. <laughs> so the, in the real world, the question is. What is your daily driver? And what keeps you coming back to your media? And why is it so difficult to develop for this thing? Okay, now daily driver, I'm talking about every day you'll turn on your Amiga and you'll do something with it. What makes you do that? Right? Every day, real work, right? Is it email? Is it web? Something else, right? It's got to be something. So we're, we're talking high. What makes us go, right? <laughs> It's not tinkering, it's like what would make you use it every single day? That's what we're shooting for here. So that's why I said it's solve all the problems. <laughs> what keeps you coming back and why is it so difficult? Right? So <coughs> second part of the real world. So I thought and we thought that what really makes you come back probably is number one, the web browser. So 10.4 Fox is a good target right now. So what if we had 10.4 Fox running nice and smooth, didn't crash on your Amiga right now? Would you use it every day now? Right? Right? Probably. Right? You can use the Google spreadsheets, no problem. Everything runs. That would help. What's 10.4 Fox? What? Oh, it's, oh, it's, Fox. it's a Firefox fork. It's oh, Firefox, Firefox fork yeah. specifically written for Macs running PPC. Or PPC. And it's okay. maintained, it's continuously maintained that what he's doing is he has it, been backporting, forking, and then backporting parts of the new Firefox into his fork mm -hmm. for the last PPC version of Firefox. Yeah, That's pretty cool. So it's big Andy. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I have it on my PowerBook, and yeah. it's like it's a good solid thing. It's limited or hobbled by the you know, or inefficiencies of Mac OS. But it is what it, it, so you can handle most everything you throw at it. Yep. yep. Modern opinion. Office Suite, another one. What if we had LibreOffice, right? Yeah. That's okay. There's there's actually someone working on it right now. I wouldn't have to use my Linux box. But again, that, that would be provided it was kept up to date with the, yep. That's the level to. on the platforms. Yep. Right there. Must be oh, maintainable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you just port. Ice weasel and walk away, that's not going to cut it, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> Timber Wolf, they got the poor. Yeah, yeah. Right. or Timber Wolf, or whatever yeah. it is, and you walk away, we'll be back here again next right. year. Well, or doing or it again. Oddity, got ported. Oddity, ported, walked away. Here we are again, waiting for the next, waiting, 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 right? So, and I, I put my own thing on here, Plex, because I'm a Plex user. That's a streaming platform. Uh, if I had a way to watch my, well, a Plex Media Player on Amigo OS. And I wouldn't use my Apple TV. Throw it away, don't need it. <laughs> or I also use a Roku, right, for streaming. I use a PC for streaming, Mac for streaming, Linux for streaming, can't use Amiga. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I mentioned that, just my own personal thing. But if you, I don't know what streaming media players you, or media servers you guys might have. There's lots of them out there. Cody, you think, is one? And straight away, I don't know. So long as I can use the web browser to stream uh, stuff off of YouTube or well, that also watch the TV on yeah. the Hulu thing. This is my own personal service. Huh? Yeah. Not Google only. <laughs> and the big thing is it must be maintainable. Again, this is real world, right? I think in the real world, if we had these kind of things, we'd come back to it every day. We could use it. We actually get a lot more users too. That's another nice side effect. So that that's the goal of this manifesto. So how do you get there? How do you, it's pretty lofty, right? Can I add a point to that? What? Can I add a point to that? Yes. yes. Must have maintainers. Yeah. That's what I mean by maintainable. Maintainers. Yeah. So. So. 
maybe it must be maintained instead of maintained. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's got to be uh, long term. Yeah. We can't have a hero come in, save the day, and then walk away again. <laughs> that's that's getting annoying. <laughs> can't have heroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to throw up this manifesto, which was for agile software development. Agile. Right? This is their manifesto. Very short. That's what I would point out. This is it. This is how short it is. So that's why our manifesto is very short too. That'll make the, the core of it extremely short and guiding. It guides uh, everything you do. Right? So the uh, software, the agile people, I don't know when they did this. This was a long time ago. 15 years ago maybe? They developed this. Maybe more. Now, Scrum is a product of this kind of thinking. That's just one way, but what guides it is this part. These things, right? Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. It's very fluffy. Right? So <laughs> if you have a tool vendor coming up and say, oh, I have this awesome new tool, it'll make you productive. Oh, wait a minute. Does it have these two aspects in it? in the tool. Right? That's what's more important than the tool. You always have to go back you know, to your manifesto and rethink, well, wait a minute, I don't want to get distracted, right? We have limited resources. <laughs> so, I have you. Uh, How who? Atlassian. Atlassian. Oh, those guys. Yeah, yeah, I use some of their tools. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> February yeah. 2001. Sorry? It's February. 2001. 2001 when yeah. that came out? Oh, it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. But, um, but, but I'm try, the point I'm trying to make is you have to have a guide if you're going to do this kind of lofty stuff because there'll be all sorts of people joining and coming and going that'll say, oh, if you do this, everything will be fixed. <laughs> Every hero has yeah. his own guide. Yeah, if we, if we switch to uh, Clang, oh, everything will be better. Why use GCC? We even claim. How does it make everything better? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, it more doesn't. It, if more people like using it, we can get more developers. Yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> we need way bigger data than that. So, uh, our manifesto, very short, <laughs> focus on the real world. <laughs> not weird side projects, right? So we want the daily driver. We want the real world, right? So if it doesn't help make the daily driver work, we don't do it. That's what we're saying, right? So if you have some crazy new graphics driver over here, it's like, good for you. How does it help us get 10 more bucks on it? <laughs> uh, focus on helping users. That would be a nice change. Uh, we've been running on focus. We've been focused on the developer, I think, for the last ooh eight years. Yeah, yeah. We've been helping developers. Developers come up with uh, all sorts of cool APIs and cool little. <coughs> the users don't care. <laughs> they say, "Where's my web browser? Where's my spreadsheet or whatever?" WordPress. They've been waiting and waiting. Uh, focus on helping developers as well because our developers are pretty, they suffer a lot for their art. So I <laughs> want to help them too. And uh, the big thing, I think, is do not focus on profit. So what I mean by that is if you have something to release, you release it. You don't hold it back hoping to get some money out of it. <laughs> not naming names, but. Uh, <laughs> I will. <laughs> You just don't hold it for years and years, hoping to squeeze a few bucks out of it, right? No, no, that's that's not what you should be focusing on. Your your focus should be on what makes users happy, what brings them back to the platform every day, right? Holding back updates does not bring the users back. Does not make the daily driver work. <laughs> you know, you want to be profitable. But not helping, get out of the way. <laughs> so, concepts. Now we get into some more nitty gritty. A lot of Amiga people won't like this. 
<laughs> so, number one, we focus on Visual Studio on Windows. <laughs> if, you, uh, if, if you look at the stats, statistics, all of the developers are in Visual Studio. And they're all basically on Windows or Mac. They are not on our platform. You know, it's shocking. <laughs> so, one of our big concepts is, okay, we want, we want to get new developers. And if you want a new developer, you have to make it work on Visual Studio, whatever it is. Right? Visual Studio Code or Visual no, Studio No, I can proper. use Visual Studio on my PC, spit out Amiga programs. Right. Bang. But, the, but the paid Visual Studio or the free Visual Studio Code? Whatever you want to pay for. Okay. <laughs> it's free, so use the free one. If you want to pay for it, pay for it. It's a matter of me. <laughs> but the focus is Visual Studio, right? Because yeah. that's where the people are. That's where the developers are. They're not anywhere else. <laughs> that's the majority of the world, right? Uh -huh. Then uh, you have the, uh, what's that other big one? The free one. Eclipse. Eclipse. It's another one. Way, way smaller market. If you look at the market numbers, there's Studio Wins, Eclipse, but that big. <laughs> we want them too, but again, you have to pick your battles, right? So, what are you suggesting? I suggest, uh, I'll get to it. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Um, now, okay, say, say I had this today. Okay, how do I test it? I don't want to, I want to buy some weird custom hardware. <laughs> So we thought, Any well, <laughs> QEMU test target. Because we're trying to think like a non-Amiga developer, right? We want these guys to maintain this thing long term. We want the 10 core Fox guy to be able to make Amiga targets on his build server, right? We don't want to be involved in it. He just hits a button and so it comes. And then if he wants to run a quick test on his automated <coughs> environment, fire it up on the QEMU. You got your SAM 460 right there, <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, so that's another key concept. Uh, another one is the C++ standard library. Ours is garbage, so we have to fix it. <laughs> we have to get up to a minimum of C++ 11. Absolute minimum now. That's a, that's a colossal piece of work. Uh, it's not a colossal piece of work. It's already been done. Well, are you going to borrow a C library? From of course, we're not going to run. A, we're not going to build it from scratch. Okay. No, that's silly. That's silly. So the only so I I, mean, I say the C plus plus library because the C library comes along for free almost. Okay. It's it's so simple by comparison. Yeah, but I I I, I just want to make sure because doing a, a a library like that, you're going to I mean ninety percent of the work is just the testing. Yes. It's all actually all the works of testing. Yes, I mentioned that too. It, this has been discussed for a very long okay. time. It's okay, you're catching up. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I said it's got to be automated test. And we've got to be 100% sure that library is solid. Because I don't want another bug tracing fun time <laughs> finding the C library bug, right? Like, uh, we're sick of that. So. so we have to make this all maintainable, right? Uh, Docker, of course. Use Docker for uh, for containing all the images. So I should be able to go up to my random Windows guy, and say, "Here's the Docker image for Amigo OS. Build some binaries, he installs it, and it runs. Doesn't even think about it, right? That's what we're shooting for. And uh, I already found a guy that does uh, Docker images. In the, he's got a little GitHub page, and he's doing Docker scripts right now. And I talked to him, and he said, "Oh yeah, I want to get involved. I want to get involved." So, <laughs> Docker solved. <laughs> Again, there's a free version, or you can pay. What is um, it? It's it's a a container system <coughs> where I could go. It, it 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 takes absolutely everything that makes it a container, including the operating system. Everything, right? <laughs> So you could take a Linux installation, put GCC on there, put the SDK on there, put tools on there, all of that together is a Docker container. And I just go run Docker. And it runs the compile for me. I 
It's just a, it's a, it sounds it's insane. A, it's a platform? <laughs> yeah, a platform. Virtual. How would you describe it? A it's, virtual, a, it's, it's a virtual lightweight, machine? Yeah, it's a lightweight virtual machine architecture. It's yeah. container architecture. Yeah, it's not a virtual machine. It's, it's a container. More a container. Yeah. It contains everything. So all those dependencies and links and weird versions of everything, it's all hidden. Would you include the QEMU in that? Yes. Yeah. Everything. And uh, this is all uh, part of Visual Studio? No. no. Be Dollar powered. is a separate, so a separate product. Yeah, it's a separate product. It's powered. So I, I go into Visual Studio. I got a plug in, I hit compile and run, yeah. goes to my docker, runs it, comes back. I didn't even touch an Amiga. That's what you said, the <laughs> docker did the building. Yes, it would have the compiler in it. Okay. So it's Visual Studio for us, the RDE? Yes, yes. That's just uh, to make everyone comfortable sure. and to give you a debugging environment that you like. So cool. most people like it. I don't know if I do. I'm not the target here. <laughs> so we'd still be using GCC. What's that? We'd still basically be using GCC. We can use GCC, we can use Clang, we can use whatever we want at that point. It includes the OS with it too. So it, it's big. Yeah, and it's fast. I, I'm actually um, in the process of making my own little Docker server at home right now to play with. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. And then uh, another concept, which personally I'm not convinced of, is using Qt for GUI development. So this is a weird thing. Yeah. So imagine if you use Qt to draw all your reaction stuff, <coughs> and then there was a translator that translates that into oh. a poopsie. So you didn't want Qt on, on Amiga? No, not Qt on me. No, no. no. Okay. That's just to get you designing mm -hmm. on your Visual Studio. Again. Using QD objects, widgets. What are they called? I can't remember. Widgets. Well, I, I'm I'm a little confused. How, yeah. how exactly does this work? So you're you're suggesting mm -hmm. that there's going to be some sort of layer where I can design a GUI. Yeah. In Visual Studio, if you're drawing it. Okay. So in, in QT, yeah. somehow or another, that's going to map to translate. Yeah. To uh, a layout and yes. a reaction object of uh, gadgets. Yeah. And yeah. How? Well, actually, uh, the Jamie attribute, did a... The, the attributes of these things are very different. Think, well, you, know, you, know, you just simplify it. Remember okay. Jamie's, uh, <coughs> Jamie's runtime driven reaction yeah. GUI? Yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> um, it's possible. I'm not saying it's great, but it's possible. Okay. Right? So you make this script out of QD now. Simplify QD. And then oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Translate it okay, to Jamie script, whatever that is. Okay. Then run it on your Amiga. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So you can add all sorts of behaviors and things to the yeah. various widgets, and if they don't translate, then they just they yeah. drop. I don't know about that idea. <coughs> so the other ones. I agree with all this other stuff. This is kind of. I'm not. I'm not totally convinced personally, but others have thought, well, it might work. I mean, ideally, the thing uh, is, is, isn't uh, <laughs> Simon working on a? Uh, isn't Simon working on something similar? For reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Like an emperor replacement in yeah. the bench? Uh, We've been doing that for decades. Has he actually gotten anywhere with it? I don't think Everybody's been trying that for decades. decades. There's always a problem of how do you get that and then get back to source code and then get back to that mm -hmm. and then back to source code. Yeah. I mean, we used to do that. Jamie had the same thing. I mean, he talked about having this whole structure that you define the program in and you're just filling in bits into it. Yeah. And, but if you go into the GUI builder and then back out again, yeah. yeah we, we used to do this with rational rows. Remember, IBM bought that. <laughs> yeah, the rational stuff. Yes. I used to use that stuff. Yeah, we. we, we were, and we were. and it would claim to do round trip um, GUI development. Mm -hmm. Never worked. Well, it's set that mm -hmm. with CAD. That's they twenty years ago. Build the thing in a three D model <laughs> and make a two D drawing out of it. Work. But if you ever want to go back to the three D model, you broke your two D model. Yeah, it doesn't. It never did. Never did. Never will. As far as I'm concerned. CAD CAM. Remember that? Uh, anyway, people always think it's possible. Uh, I'm not sure of the best ideas, but I do like Visual Studio, a test environment, proper library, Docker, containers. 
And of course, native development would not go away. You got to support native development. I mean, because we're us traditionalists, if you want to call us that. We still like to hack the old way. So, got to keep that around. But it doesn't mean you can't take this and container it and do the rest, right? So the idea here is to get a lot more developers and a lot more users with the daily driver. So that's the whole idea. Have you, have you considered HTML for GUI development? Just because so many people know HTML? No, that's not good. Well, you have to write it at GUI in a web browser. Yeah. Which is so Where's your web heavy. browser? Right, and, and it's so heavy and so slow. It Everything is. that is like it's you horribly, know, eight megabytes horribly. for a window. Horribly, <coughs> horribly slow. It's terrible. Like, but I know a lot of uh, corporations like it nowadays. You know, like it, it, it solves the problem, and they just throw a CPU at it. No more problem. Well, they're also right. once you're in the web browser, yeah. it's trivial for them to make the thing public. Home. Yes. Well, that's no, 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 I think it's shocking that it's a security hole. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, the, the CPU power needed is suddenly at the client. Right. It pushes it to the client. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, it does solve certain problems. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't make my LibreOffice work, so I don't care. See, that's why you need the, the real world test. Right? Does this help me get 10 4 Fox? No. Don't want it. See? Because there's so many other things that we could do HTML and do this. <laughs> so, that's why I think uh, it's essential to go back to your manifesto again. Does this help me get what I really wanted? No, then don't do it. That's what we got to do with every little piece of tech. Like we could do a JVM too, right? It's another solution. We could do all sorts of things. C, C sharp. <laughs> yeah. There's so many technologies now. Is it the right solution? Does it get me a user using an Amiga every day? That's what we got to have a laser focus on that. And we think these things will, or will make it maintain. That's our theory. <laughs> so, a uh, little, little bit about each one now, right? Because I got the key things, so I wanted to get some more detail on each item, each item. So, as we know, real world uses Visual Studio. If you didn't know that, well, now you, yeah, you do. <laughs> We're talking millions of developer, developers, not thousands. Um, Visual Studio Community Edition is free, so it runs on here, runs on Windows. Um, lowest cost of entry is what I'm thinking, right? So if we want to attract new people, maybe an LD type person, imagine if they could just pop it up and run, right? Uh, cross compile with the uh, GCC, and um, Kevin Wong was here last couple, couple of years. He he actually did those instructions for SIGWIN, right? Remember those instructions for cross-compiling? Yeah. Did you look at the uh, read count on that article he posted? Yeah. 10,000 hits. How many of those were Google? No, not Google. Cool? No. It's real people. Awesome. <coughs> we're not, not thousands, <coughs> 10,000. He that's posted those um, a couple years ago, right? And we're like, where are these people? I haven't seen them, are you? <laughs> Looking at these instructions that he posted. He posted it on amigans.net as well, which is a, this big. But that link has been shared among developers all over the world. And they're all looking. And he didn't bite, because it's still a lot of work. <laughs> Well, that's where your Docker idea has a lot of merit because yeah. I tried to go through the instructions. That's <coughs> I've built a lot of development machines in my lifetime. Yes. I could not get that through to completion to get an executable out to run so, it. So, what if you had a Docker script? So, yeah. that's what I'm saying. If, 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 I, if I could just run a Docker container and yeah. have a build environment, then it's done that would help immensely. Would, would you like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. <laughs> I also tried to do it. Didn't work so well. I actually ran out of time because <laughs> there was so many things to do. Yeah. Right? I, got make, close. I got you close. You got to grab this library, make that link, change the file name of this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we invented computers for. 
Well, that's what doctors for. Yeah, exactly. That's why they took it up a notch. Uh, yeah, I thought, well, you know, that's an interesting, interesting stat that that article's been topped that many times. Very interesting. Because I don't think we have 10,000 users, 10,000 developers. I don't think so. <laughs> Where, who is hitting this thing? Well, it's, there are also you've got people who are just fishing. Oh, what, what the hell is this? They go in here and they read yeah. the first three sentences. Right. They're all the next so one. why would they go to a vegan stuff? Even if it was, even if it was one person. That's quoted on there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. right. He was slashed on his face. Yeah. 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 So I imagined, well, imagine if they could just hit a link and then download the complete Docker <laughs> with test target. With test target, right? So that uh, test target. So how do we get seamless Q EMU UAE integration? Because I want to be able to run without the Amiga hardware. That's very important. Without. Now you do ultimately need the hardware, but. Um, we want to make it easy to do it without and with the GDB server so I can actually step through my code. Step, step, <coughs> step, step, see what it's doing, right? And it's all running 4.1, whatever, right? <laughs> and I can actually do this on my laptop or whatever it is that I have. My 64 core monster thing in the basement, right? You can do it on that. <laughs> so who made the same target? Hmm? Where did that come from, the same 460 target? Well, that's that's what I thought was one target we could use for the QMU. Yeah, but who right? made it? Hmm? Who created it? Oh, that was uh, Sebastian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, have you got any idea of what it would involve to make, say, an uh, X5000 target? I don't. Well, I was going to ask Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's all uh, nice and fine if uh, people test stuff they make mm -hmm. in that environment uh, yeah. on a 460 target. But if, if it breaks when it comes over to, to the yes. higher level machines, then... That's true. That's true. This stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, uh, the important thing, though, is the QEMU. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's and the UAE right. integration. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be easy. And the GDB server, because mm -hmm. the GDB server will then talk back to Visual Studio and you can actually debug this thing from there through the plugin, right? So it's all a cycle. So you can go compile, test, debug, round and round. That's the goal. And so this is for non-Amiga people, right? Maybe we can use it too. But, uh, that's the interesting take on this. So that the idea would be to add so many people that maintaining these things becomes possible we got to get, make it maintainable. That's another goal. We don't want another, uh, what was it, ice weasel, right? The code's out there, nobody cares. No one's doing anything with it. Temporal. Temporal, sorry, I can't say ice weasel. <laughs> uh, that's the email <laughs> plan. Uh, <laughs> or what was it? I can't no, it's ice weasel is, is uh, a Linux uh, version of, of the Fireworks. Hmm? Uh, Ice Weasel is a Linux. Uh, oh, that's the Linux version. That's yeah. what I've been using. Yeah. No, it's actually, <laughs> it's it's actually Thunderbirds. Debian. It's the email. Thunderbirds yeah. email, yeah. Why do they have these weird names all the time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Web browser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they always have these weird names because of the trademarks, I know. <laughs> you can't call it Firefox if they didn't make it or they come sue you. <laughs> Found that out. Um, <laughs> So that's the test target. And then the other big thing is C++. Mm -hmm. That's got to be up to date because these, these applications that we want to run, most of them are C++ based in some way. Like they might even be indirectly C++ based. What's the Java core written in? Not Java. <laughs> So uh, these days, is it 14 as a minimum? It's 11. Where did, when did they add threads? <laughs> 11. So I, I think I typed that should be 11. But anyway, I think 17 is a good target too. There's, C++ has progressed a bit since we last touched it. I think we're at C++, what version are we at? Amiga? 
Zero one? <laughs> Maybe not that bad. What have we got? 2018, 2009, C version? It's been a while. It's been a while. But there have been a couple jumps in C that happened since uh, we last looked at it. And that, uh, they've added a, a memory, a memory, uh, what do we call it? Memory map? No. Memory model. Memory model has been added to C since we did it. And that paved the way for a threading model, which is now built in. And all of your web browsers and office suites are using those facilities now. Why reinvent the wheel? Key threads are dead. <laughs> they're still kicking, but they're gone. Um, <laughs> it's time to, uh, time to catch up. <laughs> And, um, well, yeah, yeah, so we might have to fiddle with exec. So, do you know anybody fiddling with exec? <laughs> <laughs> it's a coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <clears throat> Atomic's another big one. That's built into the language. Uh, C++, I should say. We don't have Atomic's uh, in exec. Not anymore. No. Not so sweet. Script 68 categories. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I can throw it in there now. No problem. And we, we have funding. <laughs> That's a good thing. Anyway, um, as LD mentioned, tested. So, to test this beast, you can't be on Amiga directly. Um, it's going to be tricky. So, I thought the way to test this thing might be through QEMU. That's what I was thinking. I'll take other ideas, but <laughs> uh, to get our test, it depends how they, drove, they drive their test environment, because there's at least three C++ libraries we're looking at, porting. And depending on how they drive their test, you might need like full Python 3, you might need Perl, I don't know what it is, that drives their tests, right? But we want to use their test driver to test our library. So however makes, whatever makes that easiest. Um, I'm one of the few guys that ported uh, C++ Boost. Remember that? Still around. Boost C++. It's that library that extends C++ even further. And uh, it ran using BJAM to build it. Not make, not CMake, BJAM. <laughs> Which is a custom tool, which I had to port first <laughs> to get it to even build. <laughs> oh, what a pain. Right? So we want to try to get this done in a way that's maintainable again, right? Porting other people's tools to make your test environment work. Not really maintainable, so we have to figure out a way to do this. We can dockerize it again. It's a verb now, isn't it? Dockerize. <laughs> like architecting. And uh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> he knows me so well. Um, so if I know users don't care about this, but if they, they do care about 104 Fox, which uses C11, 12, I can't remember. <laughs> as a base. And regular updates. One thing uh, has happened is our SDK hasn't moved in a very long time. I, who did the last one? C++ FE, maybe had one? Yeah, it had one. But nothing, none of the tools updated. The C library didn't update, the C++ library didn't update. It's way, way, way behind. There's a lot of stuff in AD tools that needs to be reintegrated. Yes, AD tools, a lot of work to do there. A lot of work to do there. So where do we find the bodies to do this work, right? Well, imagine if it was Visual Studio driven. Maybe more people would volunteer, right? That's what we're, we're trying to uh, address here. Because getting people to come down to your level doesn't always work. So we go back, go to their level. That's what we're thinking. Anyway, let's um, C++, Docker, 
came in technology. I was worried about maintaining the docker. Who's going to maintain the dockers? Someone's got them. Here we're back again, right? We need more people. So that's why uh, I like the docker technology because a lot of professionals know what it is and how to use it. And we could get their interest because they're using Visual Studio probably. They're using Eclipse to do their work. And if we can get their interest, help us keep this working. And uh, I wish I wrote that guy's name down, but uh, he, he just came up with Dockers for our AD tools. And it runs on OS 4. And I think he made one for AROS and Mark OS too, which I didn't look at. <laughs> Not interested in those. But um, I thought, wow, this is great. And he knows his Docker, right? He, he wrote the scripts. <laughs> And he's maintaining it, maintaining it on GitHub, free, open, right? So other people can help help him keep it going. So this is this is the kind of guy we want on our team, right? Then Judy, uh, that was an interesting idea. So I, I mentioned that already. You can map to move the objects, and you can use the runtime interpreter. No, I'm not sure if it'll work. But that aspect, uh, I, I'm not. I don't see how it. Uh, helps so much with their daily driver, right? Uh, it helps, but not. It's more for native development. Uh, like Mark, um, when you develop your tools, you have to do it in your head or on a whiteboard and then code it, right? right. That's how I usually do it. That's how I do it. One thing in, add it, add it, add it. Or you just have one thing and just add with code. You don't see anything until you code it. Right. Yeah. Well, you do. Rough idea, you know, you kind of yeah, you bars the same here. I want these two sidebars. You could do a, a layout gadget. That's how I used to do it. Layout gadget. Put two space gadgets. <laughs> oh, there. Now I know what it looks like. Replace the space with when I want it. Let's run through. Next step. Next step. Next step. Right. Yeah, so I'm not sure I want to use QD for that. But whatever. It's not that hard. <laughs> anyway, so that was one idea. Then uh, native development. Oh, yes. Well, we, we can't forget the native developers, the Tonys, the Stevens. <laughs> I still like to work natively. Uh, advanced visuals developers out there. Well, it's coming soon, maybe. Oh, Jamie? <laughs> uh, CodePunch. <laughs> it's it's uh, another nice tool, but it's uh, also not really out there. It's kind of out there, but not. Uh, shell driven. I, I use the shell today. Still, Visual Studio would be a plugin. There might be some native developers. I know there are native de developers that do this. They don't use the tools on the Amiga to make their code. They use a different machine. Whatever it is, Linux usually. Uh, AG Frederick. Frederick. He uses Ubuntu. <coughs> and whatever tools he's using there. I don't know. And then just, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what he uses to move the files over. Maybe SSH or something. Maybe shared something. I think he uses SSH. He also does an SSH handler, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. What a coincidence. Um, <laughs> I bet you he uses that. Yeah, I haven't talked to him about it. And there's guys like that that don't like the tools on the native, but they still want to do native compile. I think maybe they don't. Well, he does cross compile too. Yeah, he does cross. I don't think he does native. He does develop um, compiling. Maybe. You I don't think? I think he's mostly cross. Mostly cross now. Yeah. Yeah. Many of our developers on the the core team are cross developers. Then there's the. You know, uh, well, I was always native. I did a little bit of cross, but it, it got so messy because I couldn't figure out what the file version and what is. Right? <laughs> Be nice if that was dockerized. <laughs> Someone else did it for me. Um, uh, so one thing I, I want to do with the exec SG team is have a docker uh, image script, whatever you want to call it, for exec SG team members. So if they want to, they can cross compile on it, whatever machine they has Docker on it. Just run Docker, out comes binary. <laughs> right? But that would, then people would use it, I bet. You can run it on your little Mac 
Mac laptop or whatever it is, and you can still do a mega development. And then you run it on the real machine. Yeah, very nice. Uh, what we have to do is we have to develop the plugin. Plugin <coughs> is, uh, is new development. They have an API for their plugins, Microsoft, and then you call whatever you want, right? You call out and you bring the results back. But some, who's going to develop that, right? Somebody. We had some ideas on who, but <laughs> once you have that plugin developed, then the rest just takes care of itself. So. Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, that was our idea. Uh, for that. What next? So this is where I'm like, okay, you got all these great ideas. Who's going to do it all? <laughs> well, I thought, well, we need a place to host everything. I had some people suggest uh, um, GitHub or GitLab or get this or get that. <laughs> Just everyone likes Git now, so whatever, I don't care. But the underlying uh, uh, source, source control system, this doesn't really bother me. I've used uh, at least eight in my lifetime, maybe 10 source control systems, so I don't really care what it is. <laughs> Everybody claims to be the best. <laughs> uh, assemble a team, of course, develop product backlog or, or some kind of list of things we need, right? Because who's going to do the Visual Studio plugin, for example? Who's going to do the Docker scripts? Uh, figure out some kind of leadership team. Uh, uh, I imagine it would be uh, a council of kind, some kind, like a group of people that would run the decisions instead of a, a Linus kind of guy at the top. I don't know, right? <laughs> That's why I'm kind of bringing it up here, right, to get the ideas flowing. But, um, you could do a dictatorial thing, or you could do a <laughs> council, team, steering committee thing. I've seen steering committees work. Apache has a steering committee, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. That seems to work okay. It's not perfect. You need some, some kind of leadership, though. At least. Because uh, if I programmers don't know what to do if they don't have somebody tossing them around. So. <laughs> Inquire funding. Because we did some estimates on funding, and uh, the word, the, the number 30,000 came up. 30,000 US bucks, we figure, to do all the bits, get it done, get the C library done, and everything done, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not, maybe less. Hoping for less. And how long would it take to develop all that stuff, right? Well, not as long as you expect. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you have brand new hardware with modern stuff driving it. It doesn't take that long. A couple of months. Well, yeah. they've done a couple of months, yeah. If they're running in parallel, right? You gotta get the bodies. bodies. But you need the leadership team first. So maybe that takes a month to figure out your leadership team. Right. <laughs> so you Three months now, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, the 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 main point is, it's, it wouldn't be years. It would not be years. No, I don't think it's years either, because a lot of these pieces are there already, but they're not polished. They're not finished. Like eighty tools exist, and I saw the the great work Sebastian did to put native threading in there, so it doesn't even use P threads anymore. Uses exact processes. It just does it. Like, well, yeah, there we go. Half the work's done. <laughs> and of course, this would be done in an open source kind of environment too, right? Because if you want people to help you, you can't be doing it for profit and expect them to donate their time, and then you take the money and leave, right? It's like, that's not going to work. <laughs> Which way for those ideas? Somebody's apparently done something very similar for um, 68K. Yeah, 68K. Yeah, they a wrote a Visual kind. Studio code extension here for yeah. Windows, and yeah. you can write code and See? button, and it goes off and 
Well, yeah, well, because the CCC and then pushes it into when Well, think it. about it. Are you going to do NIDA development on 68K and NIDA? No, of course not. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. I'm looking at the, the city. He's got him on GitHub already. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, why can't we do that for 4.1? Why not? Yeah. Now I'm thinking a little bigger, though. A little bigger. Like, what's driving it? You know? A daily driver. Back to the real world, right? Um, oops. Set up the globe line. There it is. Credits. Okay, what next? Then I have credits. So Jamie, uh, Kevin Wong and Jamie Kruger kind of came up with this one, by the way. Last name you West. And we've been pondering what to do with it. Ah, I do that, I do that. Because when you, when you go to your uh, people like, uh, uh, well, pe people with, with, with funding, <laughs> show me your plan. Where's your business plan, right? Well, we gotta have that first, don't we? <laughs> Before you go up, say, please, sir, some more. <laughs> uh, so the call to arms, back to the real world again, right? Hopes and service skills. And I thought, well, I can help maybe get people talking. I don't want to leave this thing because I've got enough to do. But um, this might be something one of you guys might be interested in helping with, right? You know, on the steering committee, so to speak. See if we can start moving things, get up, come up with our plan, our business plan, so we can get the funding to get the C++ library ported, right? You get the funding, get the Docker going. And then the important thing is it will be on GitLab, GitHub, whatever, so that we can get others stimulated and start to join in, right? We can maybe advertise a little bit somewhere. Maybe you throw up an advertisement on, uh, yeah. Right. So is the you said offering hosting service, is the idea to offer a cloud instance somewhere for people? Cloud instance, yeah. yeah. You got, you'll have yeah. the Docker image. Yeah. So you can cloud it, no problem. Yep. Is that a verb now? Cloud? Uh, that I don't know. Yeah. But, um, okay. <laughs> you can architect the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and Dockerize that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, go back to your daily driver, right? That, I think that's that's the key, I think, in my mind. So once you know you want to produce this 10 4 box, that's, that's the yeah. target we think is achievable. How do you get there and maintain it? That's the trick, right? Maintain it, too, because like, there's going to be patches every week. How do we apply those patches to our version so we can keep up to date? And when they switch C++ libraries to C++ 17, we gotta get there. Steve, just this is our vision. Yeah, do you think we've got enough horsepower though? I'm not worried about horsepower. I am. I mean, I'm not worried you, about horsepower. Hold on a second. If, if the fastest switching we have is the 5,000. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. LibreOffice, Timberwolf, these type of ports. Yep. Let's just say they're not exactly speedy. Nope. Now my assumption is is that's because of some you know really basic program routines and loops that haven't been eliminated and yeah. all sorts of stuff that could be optimized. But I thought that too, but Odyssey seems to run okay. Well, given the substantial small. It's WebKit. That's huge. WebKit is huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah, yeah, but then you're talking about all these unoptimized automated building systems. Isn't that gonna just make it all worse? Huh? They don't run with me. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're just I don't think I'm, I'm just wondering. Code. Yeah. Do you think that 10 Fox 4 yeah. is going to go run our machines and is going to be speedy enough to be enjoyable to use? Uh, I don't know until yeah. we try it. So I'm I run it on a G4 one and a half gigahertz G4 Mac OS. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you know with all the overhead of Mac OS that we don't yeah. have. You say the overhead of Mac OS, but it's just generally sluggish compared to what I mean. Yeah. Okay. And well. so if you take that out of the equation, you think it would uh, run at least as well as that. There's, there's a couple uh, uh, 
I, I thought about it. It's like uh, there's a couple things in a web browser now that are assumed to be there, and one of them would be accelerated 2D graphics, right? So I can get that. A lot of there's a lot of building blocks here. Right? Yeah. That's why you need bodies and a way to maintain it, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we can do it alone. We need to reach out beyond our borders, so to speak, and get some Visual Studio developers in here to help. That's, that's I, I, don't, I don't see why you wouldn't try, at least. Yeah. Because I've seen, uh, I've seen efforts like AROPS, right? And it's like, it's like ISDN. Remember ISDN? Yes, I do. Remember what it stood for? Uh, integrated something visual network. No, what it really stood for. Oh, it still know. does nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was garbage. <laughs> yeah, it, it did not. And we, we moved on from it. Uh, they, Pete is here. Thank uh, you. Pete says here. Um, I look at that and I say, well, how is it not exploding? What's missing, right? That should be exploding. You have the entire world to tap for developers. Everything's open. Nobody seems to care. It's like something's missing. I'm trying to find out what's missing, right? Well, there, there's no leadership. That's missing, right? Uh, Are you using the word leadership for centralization? Centralization. Trying to central. It sounds like you're trying to centralize all this stuff someplace, and then you know, and then have a, a spider legs or arms. Well, yeah, you need all these pieces for a common goal. The daily driver. That's your goal. In, in our corporate world, the, the the centralization was the the boss system, where you yeah. somebody said, "This is my company. You do this. You do that. You do that," and then you know, yeah. some, the products come out of that. Yeah, that so what you really want is a, a, a central uh, not really, That's what I was saying. We could have a minus leader, or you could try a steering committee with no one really same, needing. Same right? centralization. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you, need, you need somebody to, to drive it. You have to. Right? Well, what's been driving it to this point? Nothing. Why, Nothing. Have, why do we have, well, we have Trevor who drove new hardware. Yeah. We, but that we, didn't help get me my web browser. <laughs> <laughs> I want my web browser. But the, what happened is the pieces that you have different drivers yes. that's doing different things that yes. somehow became a, a yes. world for us. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's nobody really uh, driving like, anything. Just a few like-minded experts. What's that? Just a few like-minded experts. Like-minded experts. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a bunch of like-minded experts. It's a bunch of users who uh, yeah. can't help it. Oh, yeah, maybe. A bunch of users. Yeah. Roman, for instance, in the case of Odyssey, yeah. who actually called it the thing. Yeah, actually, uh, Roman uh, Karchin. Yeah. yeah, he actually yes, stepped up, ported the thing, yeah. right? Without much help, uh, he got some help. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's nobody really helping. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, mm -hmm. I don't think he got any funding either. Uh, no. No. Well, and little uh, contributions. I think he has a yeah. a thing or something. Okay, so maybe yeah. some donations here yeah. and there. Yeah. But uh, that kind of effort needs so many underlying things, right? And nobody's helping maintain all the underlying things, like the compiler, the threading. He has a lot of help memory. from uh, uh, the Rui guy. Uh, what's his name? I call him Thor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, mouse. Jens yeah, mouse. Jens mouse. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think it was mostly uh, yeah. uh, Thor. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the uh, SSL guy uh, helped out to Oliver or somebody. Oliver. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. So kind of scattering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like-minded. They, they, and those like-minded guys met. In different places for that one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, that's that why I was saying you had a loose community that yeah. eventually ended up with. And then they yeah. do it and then fades away again. Yeah. When the next update comes out, uh oh. Who's they updating it again? Yeah, right? they don't have an ongoing. Let's, yeah. Let's get together every every 30 days and, and update yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is part of a centralization system. 
Yeah. Usually. Okay. It's, it is, in it, but it's open. That's what happened well. with the, the Amiga developers were the ones who all, they, they were working and they all fell off and then they didn't do anything for a while and they yeah. they did things but they didn't present them to anybody because mm -hmm. they weren't going anyplace. Yeah. yeah. So all that stuff uh, was totally uh, disjointed. And what centralizes it, of course, is when somebody made a bid say, send me all your stuff so I can you know make money on it. So sometimes the guy who does take it, put it together, put it out to make money, he becomes the central person. That's what happened with the Hyperion, no? Uh, <laughs> well, that's, what he, that's, that's why the whole thing is four point one. It's really a bunch of volunteers who gave it to him and got put together. Isn't that true? No. 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 I had a plan the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just random people doing random things. It's not, that, it's not as random as it seems. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. It, look, it's, it sometimes looks very random. It's working within the constraints. So if so, are those people who are not so random, are they in the leadership? No. <laughs> when you call for leadership, yeah. who steps up? I don't know yet. Oh. I've figured it out. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not, Michael? Can run it. I'm sure. No problem. <laughs> so you don't have to know all the technical details to run these kind of things. No. <laughs> right? You don't need it. No. You've got to boss people around. <laughs> I'm good at that. But. Uh, well, there we go. We got to make it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you <laughs> there you go. See. No, that's how it works. So maybe be on the steering committee. And that's how SAC stays alive. You know, yeah. The guy who doesn't yeah, step yeah. back and you say volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, anyway. This is our grand idea. It is a grand um, idea. I, I like. I like the. Uh, this isn't my idea, right? It's those other two, but they presented it to me. I went, huh? That could actually work. Because <laughs> you, you have to think of all the angles, right? Right. You can't just Put open source out there and expect people to come to you. Right? That doesn't work, obviously. Yeah. Everyone's it. tried it. Doesn't work. You can't just go, oh, here it is. Come, everyone, join us. <laughs> Crickets, right? <laughs> that didn't work. There has to there has to be more. What is that more? So that's why I like their plan. Because I was like, well, okay, yeah, sure, it's sure I have a leadership, but if they're just a bunch of developers making developer tools. There's no daily driver again. You're not making any users, right? <laughs> There's no users. Well, I've talked, I don't know what Trevor is, but Trevor and I talked about how we use our machines sometimes daily, or we, the fact that we do use our machines daily. Yeah. And why we, and then we say, this is what we use on it. This is why we're using that machine. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then there's a fall, well, there's always a fallback for us because we have other tools. Yeah, so that's another thing I like is the other tools. Like uh, I have a tablet, I have a laptop, I have a server. I like to link them all together with my Amiga. That's another. That's a daily driver for me. I'm gonna move data around, files around, easy. Right. Right. What is that? Maybe SSH. I don't know. NTFS. Yeah, and right now it's a USB stick. I don't want USB. I want through Ethernet. However, that works. Or you can get a secure server, like a secure FTP, like Hans set up. Yeah, yeah, I could do one of those two. Steve. Yeah. Pizza. Oh, pizza's here. Sorry, we yeah. break and then we can talk while he's Yeah, we can talk some more. Yeah. Thank you. All this discussion at this point.